Hello, my name is Dean Robinson. I'm the Household Hazardous Waste Coordinator for the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. And this is your portion of solid waste operator training on abandoned household hazardous waste. So what is household hazardous waste? Well, it's everything hazardous waste is, but in a home. So it has the same characteristics as a hazardous waste, such as flammability, corrosive, reactivity, and it's toxic. You might know it as the stuff under the sink. It's in your garage, maybe the trunk of your car. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have a shed, maybe you keep it out there. It's everything from cleaners, paints, solvents, and fertilizers. Uh, if you look at this picture, somebody has stored a bottle of bleach between what looks like two bottles of ammonia. That's not very good. Those are the things we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about what's the difference between business hazardous waste and homeowner hazardous waste. If you're a business, you have to register with the EPA. You have to uh, declare all the waste that you make. You have to measure it. You have to inspect it. You have to store it properly and you have to pay to ship it off. A homeowner can simply throw it in the solid waste, no regard whatsoever. So when it comes to you, uh, if you're working at a municipal transfer station or an incinerator or um, landfill, the homeowner is a much greater threat to you than any business ever will be. So here's the cold hard truth. Here's what you need to know about household hazardous waste in New Hampshire. Number one, New Hampshire does not recognize the EPA's HHW exemption for municipal solid waste facilities, which means if anyone in your facility knowingly accepts household hazardous waste, you become the generator. You essentially become a business, which means you now have to have, you have to be registered with the EPA. You have to have that ID number. You now have to store it according to rules. You have to inspect it. You have to ship it. You have to have the training and the infrastructure. And most importantly, you have to update your uh, facilities operating plan. It is legal for residents to throw household hazardous waste into the solid waste stream. It's not safe. It's not moral. It's not ethical. We don't want it to happen. But if they do, I don't expect anyone to go crawling down into a compactor or putting themselves at risk to eliminate it from the solid waste stream. So what, why are we doing this? Why are we putting all this effort onto eliminating HHW from the solid waste stream? Uh, if you're following along in the book, you won't have all these pictures, but here's something to make you think. Uh, reactives. If somebody throws away a bottle of drain cleaner and it gets wet, it can release a lot of heat and it has burned down facilities in the past. We've got trucks catching on fire. We don't want this to happen. Uh, can you imagine? We don't know what chemicals are in there. The fire department comes, they spray it down. You've got all that runoff into the local air, into the local wildlife and wetlands area. Can you even fathom the cost of this cleanup? We don't want this to happen. At the same time, if we don't make it convenient, we don't want to see things like this in our neighborhood. I don't want to look out my window, see my neighbor doing this. Some people want to do the right thing, but they keep missing that event. Or maybe your town doesn't have a collection event and it leads to stockpiling. And if your garage looks like this after a while, this is what's going to happen because you've got all those chemicals in there, all those fumes mixing. Only takes one bad interaction. You may have noticed the weather is changing in New Hampshire. I grew up on the coast and my whole childhood, I think I remember there being two floods. Now it seems we get a flood event on the seacoast every year. Uh, inland, they're becoming more common. And if you get a really bad one, clean up afterwards, you've got all those chemicals from all those garages and all those sheds floating around. You're the one who's probably gonna have to clean it up. Don't wanna put yourself at risk. So we wanna make it easy for people to get rid of these things, but we want them to do it correctly. What if you've been doing that? What if you've been collecting HHW this whole time thinking, you know, we're not, we don't have a permit number, we're not supposed to be doing it, but I don't want people to throw it into the dumpster down the street. What do I do? Here's what you do. Give the folks at HasWaste Waste a call, number 1-800-HAS-WAST, and get a temporary EPA ID number. So that way you'll be in compliance. Then you have a couple of options. One is you can call a hazardous waste hauler to come and get it, or you can separate and manage it if you're authorized to do so and you have the training. Or you can self-transport to another town's collection. <clears throat> What you cannot do is transport it to another town, have them store it until their collection. You're allowed one move, that's it. And that's an environmental services rule and a DOT rule. 
So the hazardous waste must stay with its ID number, whatever facility it was generated at, until it gets disposed. You can also transport it off-site to a treatment storage and disposal facility, but there are none of those in New Hampshire. So you would actually have to travel out of state and you also have to be DOT certified to do it. So your driver has to be hazmat trained and has, has whopper trained too, something to think about. Um, if you wanna know more about that, this is the rule. You can look it up before you move anything on a vehicle. You should definitely give uh, our Has Waste program a call and let them know. So you've done your due diligence. Someone's coming in. They have a whole box of stuff. It's got rusty labels on it. You can't read them. It, it smells funky. So you stop them and say, hey, we can't take that. But what's the next thing you tell them? Do you give them the next step? Because if you don't, it's going to end up here. They're going to drive to the nearest business. They're going to toss it in a dumpster. Or worse, they're going to leave it on the side of the road like we saw in a picture earlier. So what can we do to prevent that and things like this from happening? Well, one, have handouts. If somebody comes to you and say, what can I do with this? Have something to give them that has the next step on it. Something with the next collection date on it. Uh, somebody who, if you don't take cathode ray tubes. Well, who in your neighborhood does? Uh, you don't take bulbs? Who does? Well, you can't take batteries? Who does? Have that information ready for them. Signs are the next one. Signs are great if you actively point at them and say, hey, look at that sign. I've been going to the same transfer station since 1997. The signs are pretty much invisible to me. I don't see them anymore. And it's not because I'm trying to be a, a bad customer. We just get complacent over a certain amount of time. So signs are great, but you've got to point to people and say, hey, hazardous waste collection information is right there and let them know. You can also put links on your web page. This is a fantastic resource. There's some nuances to it that we'll talk about. But again, if somebody says, uh, what do I do with this gas? It's contaminated. Oh, well, why don't you go to our website? There's a link right there that'll tell you how to do that. That way your employees aren't tied up trying to explain it and you've given the person the next step. They don't feel like they're leaving empty handed. If you're going to do this, try to keep it local. If you're up in the Lakes region, nobody's gonna drive down to Waltham, Massachusetts to get rid of gas. Uh, and we'll talk about other resources too. Uh, start speaking of other resources. If you're in the Southern part of the state, this is a fantastic resource for batteries and bulbs. Uh, they'll take pretty much anything. They sell pretty much anything. You probably can't put this on your webpage because it's promoting a business and others might complain but your employees can be aware of this and let other customers know. They can, uh, word of mouth is always uh, legal. Uh, Call to Recycle is another fantastic program for batteries. If you don't have it on site, their website, you can actually go in, you can type in your zip code, put a mile radius. I think I did 25 mile radius uh, for Wolfboro and it comes up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine locations where you can bring this thing. Uh, bring your batteries again fantastic let's see town of alton transfer station was number four number five there's a lowe's that has one uh, ossipi mountain electronics has one so excellent resource i recommend you put it on your web page another resource for bulbs local some big box stores have recycling programs some mom and pops do it uh, mom and pops a lot of times these small little hardware stores they'll do a one for one say well sure yeah we'll recycle that one if you buy one or they put their collection area in the back of the store. So people have to walk through the whole store and it increases, it increases the foot traffic in their uh, building. So do some research, find out who's available, what, what programs are. If you get somebody who takes over a business or somebody who takes over a farm and they say, hey, I have a whole truckload of bulbs, can you take this? And even if you collect bulbs, that's beyond your capacity. Uh, be aware of some of the universal waste recyclers that are in New Hampshire or that have contracts with the state. Uh, that's all available on our webpage also. Have something to give them. Otherwise, all gonna go in a dumpster. Thermostats. Every municipal solid waste facility in New Hampshire should have one of these green bins from the Thermostat Recycling Corporation. DES purchased you one years ago. Uh, it's possible, if it's missing, it's possible it was stolen but there's a slim chance it may have disappeared um, in the mail or in the returning process. If you don't have one, either reach out to the HHW program or to the solid waste training program. We might be able to track it down for you. And what these are is it's a box that you can fill up with all the thermostats, mercury containing thermostats that you want 
not thermometers, not barometers, just thermostats. You have a year to accumulate because it's universal waste. When it's full, you lock it up, you ship it off, and they send you the empty one back again. Fantastic program. And they also have that feature where you can go on, type in a radius and your zip code, and it'll tell you all the different drop-off locations that there are. Again, fantastic resource to have. If you don't take used oil or antifreeze, uh, reach out to your local garages, transmission shops, things like that. <clears throat> Find out who takes it. Uh, a lot of them will take the used oil to heat their facilities over the winter. I know Walmarts, almost all Walmarts will take your antifreeze because they'll take it, they'll recycle it and sell it right back to the consumer. So that's a fantastic resource. But again, you gotta find out who takes it and who doesn't. DES has a new web page. I say new, it's been around for a little while. At the very top, you can click on search this site. You can type in household hazardous waste program. There I am, that's where my program lives. And at the very top of this page, you have find an HHW collection event. This is a fantastic resource. You can either link this page to your website, or if you want, you can actually link that PDF, but you've got to update it every year because it changes. It's getting ready to switch over this May, it usually changes late April, early May. And it will list all the collections uh, that are happening in the town or in the, I'm sorry, in the state that I know about. I'll show you that in a second. But there's also other resources for you guys too. There's information about grants, uh, forms and guidance and other resources from prescription drug take backs to administrative rules. Here's what that list of collection looks like. There's the link to it. Again, you can put that link right on your web page. Somebody comes to you and you say, oh, I missed my event. What can I do? Well, hey, go to our web page. Click on that find a collection link. Uh, on the spreadsheet, you'll see who's hosting the event, all the towns that are invited, some contact information on a web page. The one thing you won't find is the date and time of the location or date and time of the collection. And that's for two reasons. One being sometimes they change it on me and don't tell me. And then DES ends up giving out bad information. And I don't want that. But two, most importantly, is if you're going to another town's event, you have to get permission. And I don't want people just showing up. So they still have to call and get permission to go. But again, there's no reason this shouldn't be on everybody's webpage. It's a great resource. Uh, this is the Lakes Region Household Hazardous Product Facility. They are right around just south of Lake Winnipesaukee. So if you're in the central or southern part of the state, you have a resource, some place to send your people May through October. Well, think about that. If anybody comes to you and says, hey, I have a whole truckload of stuff. I had a relative pass away or I inherited something and I have to clean out an entire house. What can I do? Well, May through October, you can tell them to go on your web page, click this link and download that pamphlet. And they have a fantastic resource where they can go, they can call, and they can even get a price ahead of time in most cases. If you've got really big jobs, um, somebody bought a farm, they found four or five drums of DDT, you can't handle that. They need to call a has waste hauler. Have some ready. This is an easy handout to make. All you have to do is put the information down, hand it out to them. This is one of those useful handouts that I talked about. Great for your staff to have. So let's see, we've talked about using local resources, local businesses. We've talked about linking to the New Hampshire DES webpage. We've talked about the Lakes Region Household Hazardous Product Facility. We've talked about using drop-off locations. And we've talked about using private haulers for those big jobs. All of those together should help you reduce this and make abandoned HHW a thing of the past. <laughs>